Leave it 851, turn right heading 183. The worsening situation with the pandemic is beginning to hit Asia once again, with airlines now preparing for a period of trying times. In the past week, AirAsia Indonesia, a relatively smaller subsidiary of the big AirAsia brand, announced that they would indeed fact temporarily suspend their operations from the 6th of July through to the beginning of August. The airline, which is largely a domestic carrier, utilises narrow-body aircraft according to Planespotters.net, with the airline flying an all-Airbus A320 fleet of aircraft. They previously had the Boeing 737 within their operations, however these have now departed, making them an all-Airbus operator with typically 25 aircraft at their disposal. These aircraft have been parked up, and the average age for each is roughly at around 10.9 years. The carrier sadly has been notorious for its worsening situation when it comes to a financial position, with this pandemic coming at the worst possible time. The action to suspend operations temporarily comes as a tactic implemented to help further support the Indonesian government, who are battling a worsening as mentioned state with the pandemic and cases rising at a rapid rate. While the airline hopes the suspension will only last roughly a month, it could very easily be longer than this, and naturally for the airline this would be a complete worst case scenario, as the sooner normal does return, the better. However, I think we are all in agreement when I say this, that given the fact this pandemic has been going on for the past 16 months, 17 months or so, Sometimes, while we have an initial period of time, that can be very easily extended for the foreseeable future, meaning that while it could just be a month, it'd be very easy to make this two months and then three months, depending on the Indonesian's government perspective on the situation. You might ask how the suspension impacts their overall network. Well, for Indonesia Air Asia, they can be seen across Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and even towards Australia. This is for their international network, which may I add is not huge. However, they do also offer those domestic flights, 18 to be precise, when it comes to their network within Indonesia, which is really the one being largely affected by this. Although, in saying that, it's not like many other operators would be flying as the situation worsens severely for Indonesia. In a statement, AirAsia said, AirAsia remains committed to serving charter and also cargo flights to support repatriation missions, delivery of goods and other essential interests by implementing strict health and safety protocols. Now, the repatriation flights that they speak of can be multiple different things. However, namely of late, and I guess since the beginning of the pandemic, the repatriation missions, if you will, is to collect citizens and bring them back home, likely to Indonesia, or potentially if they're helping stricken, stranded people in Indonesia get to other locations in their network. These flights, while can be booked, can only be boarded if you have proof of residency in the country you are headed, and if there is a quarantine facility that needs to be undertaken, there's proof that you can do that and have that organised prior. Which means that AirAsia will likely fly with a limited network, if that, during this period of time, and the bulk of the passengers flying that they would usually rely on will be nowhere to be seen. If you have any thoughts on the worsening situation at Indonesia Air Asia, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. I think we can all keep our fingers crossed that this is only just a month of the temporary shutdown and it does not last any longer. As for them and their already extensive situation I've covered many times here on the channel, it would definitely not be a good result to have that extended. Until the next video, thank you very much for your continued support and I will see you next time.